Hey guys, Blake back here on Wrestling Reaction, and uh, this time around we are ranking The Rock's top 10 matches of all time. Dwayne The Rock Johnson recently returned to WWE, if you're watching this in 2024, uh, to likely set up a huge match with uh, Roman Reigns. But we're going to take a look back rather than take a look forward and decide what are the 10 best matches that The Rock has ever had, or maybe a better way to put it, what are my top 10 matches that The Rock has ever had? We're going to count those down right here on Wrestling Reaction. All right, so let's get into the top 10. But, of course, as always, you can't just have a top 10 without having an honorable mention. So we're going to start with an honorable mention here. And, again, it was really hard to kind of narrow this down to 10 matches. But we tried to do it. And, again, just for clarity, these are just based on my enjoyment of the match. There is no scientific ranking for some of these, um, you may have some higher than others, uh, and we may disagree on certain things when it comes to the Rocks matches. But um, I think you know the entertainment value was definitely there going back and watching a lot of these matches, which I did to compile this top 10 ranking and kind of took a short list of about 20 or so and kind of decided to, to narrow it down to the top 10. So let's start with the honorable mention. And I have four here on my list for the honorable mention here for the Rocks matches. And um, it includes... Rock versus Kurt Angle versus Steve Austin versus Triple H versus The Undertaker versus Rikishi and Armageddon 2000. That was the Hell in the Cell match. Uh, so that was one of the four that I have here on the honorable mention. I guess we'll just make this a top 14, right? Also have The Rock versus Kurt Angle at No Way Out 2001. Uh, of course, 2001, we'll talk about that here in just a bit. But what a run WWE had uh, of matches kind of in that, you know, stretch from the Royal Rumble to WrestleMania that year. The Rock versus Kurt Angle was a tremendous match. Um, I thought it really enjoyable at No Way Out 2001, but it falls in the honorable mention category here. You also had The Rock versus Chris Benoit at Fully Loaded 2000. Um, that was the triple main event card uh, where you had Triple H, Jericho, Last Man Standing and such. And so um, that was one that was a, a good match on the card. And then the one I'm going to go into a little bit more here. This was probably, you know, number 11 if I made the list. Um, the Rock versus Mankind, Halftime Heat. So this is, of course, a very unique match because... Uh, it wasn't an in-ring classic, and honestly, I forgot how entertaining it was until I went back and watched it recently. Here's some of the things The Rock did in this match. Now, remember, it's halftime heat. There's empty arena. There's no one there. Um, so all the the entertainment was brought to you courtesy of these two guys. And, of course, the commentary was pretty great as well with Vince um, as the solo commentator. But, you know, The Rock mocks Mr. Sacco by sticking him in an oven. Um, <laughs> he stuck Mankind into the oven. The Rock also drank Jack Daniels. He spit out popcorn because it was too salty. He answered an office phone multiple times using a hello SmackDown hotel greeting uh, and much more. Like he did all these things. And that is just, again, the the awesomeness of the rock to be able to do all these different things and keep you entertained with not a single person in the building. And just these two trying to pull this off in a very unique you know, situation here. Uh, and like I said, I just, I loved it <laughs> for that reason alone is that it just did not take itself too seriously. Um, and again, Vince's over the top reactions as the commentator here, um, it only added to the entertainment value. Uh, and one point, I think Vince, I wrote this down off the line, um, saying those of you just tuning in might say, what the hell am I watching? Uh, that was his way to kind of tee up <laughs> exactly what this was. And, um, you know, Hey, maybe he was foreshadowing the, the typical viewer experience of raw, in certain eras, but uh, I kid, I kid. Uh, the Rock on commentary before Mankind brought out Mr. Zocco on him was another fun spot. Um, and even with the empty arena match being kind of a commonplace, of course, once you got into the pandemic area and all that, it's just hard to replicate the true uniqueness that was halftime heat. So um, didn't make the top 10, just outside the top 10, but that is one that I think we should bring up, uh, putting in that list uh, for sure. So all right, on to the top 10 proper. Let's go. We start with number 10. It is The Rock versus Steve Austin, the no-holds-barred match at Backlash 1999. Now, this match uh, was for the WWE Championship, and uh, you know what stood out the most with this match? Well, look, I always preferred the Backlash match to the WrestleMania match that year, uh, and the rewatch just really didn't change my opinion. They brawled all over the place, which was typical for this time period. Um, each man kind of getting thrown into the one side of the chain fence set, which was, you know, the, the sets during this era too, were just great to have sort of the uniqueness of those. That was a nice touch. And, you know, just given all the hatred and animosity that this match had going into it, it was deserving of a brawl. It was not deserving of any sort of technical bout of any kind. 
And that's what you got. You got the brawl. Um, you know, the rock showed off his charisma yet again by putting on the headset. You know, he's telling Austin <laughs> that he's a piece of trash. Um, but you know, the real treat, if you want to remember the one visual from this match, that was the rock playing cameraman on top of the announce table. Um, before Austin gave him the devil salute into the camera, uh, prior to hitting the stunner it's creativity. I mean that a lot of points for creativity there. And this is just one of those matches that played out like it needed to for the story. And I just, I greatly enjoyed this one. So number 10, Steve Austin versus the rock. Um, no holds barred 1999 backlash. Uh, that was uh, again, number 10 on the list. All right. Number nine, the rock versus Steve Austin, uh, WrestleMania 19. And here we go again, right? You'll get that. If you watched WrestleMania 19 recently, um, I think, that song was looped uh, thousands of times throughout the lead up and event there for that one. But the story was what it needed to be. You know, the rock had never beaten Steve Austin at WrestleMania. And this was the final opportunity. This was the last chance, right? The rock had earned millions of dollars. Um, he'd become a Hollywood star. He betrayed the bigger than WWE persona to absolute perfection, but <laughs> he had never beaten his biggest rival at the biggest show of the year. And so you had the rock putting on, you know, Austin's vest midway through the match. That was just a thing of genius. Again, the visual just of having that, uh, I really enjoyed that from an entertainment perspective and, you know, having these two icons kind of steal each other's finisher video game style is also fun. You know, that's kind of one of those things we saw from these guys. Um, and so that added to the match, you know, the rock stole the stunner, like only the rock could, uh, and his facial expressions after the rock, after Austin kicked out of the second rock bottom, if you go back and watch that, it just said it all. I mean, that just kind of showed you the versatility of this guy. Uh, and then he did the pause before the third rock bottom to win it. So once again, the rocks uh, expressions just were, were, were the best. I mean, they were just on another level and you know, there's not enough adjectives to describe the rocks character work here. And this being Austin's last match, which was the time little did we know he'd come back and have the match at WrestleMania against Kevin Owens um, only adds to kind of the place, I think in the history uh, of this rivalry. So, uh, yeah, this was number nine. And, you know, again, I wouldn't be surprised if some people had this a little bit higher just based on um, how fun this was when you go back and watch it. So, all right, on to number eight. And <laughs> screen's going to get big here because we got a lot of names to put on here. That, of course, was The Rock, Chris Jericho, The Big Show, Kane, and The Undertaker versus Steve Austin, Kurt Angle, Booker T, Rob Van Dam, and Shane McMahon. Survivor Series 2001. Um, we can say a lot <laughs> about 2001 post WrestleMania. Um, and you know, the invasion and the alliance and all these things, but this was an entertaining match. This was really good. And you know, again, it was only fitting that the rock and Austin would both start and finish a match that was built up as the most important in wrestling history to this point. Again, given the stakes, there were, you know, WCW, WWF, WF, it just the stakes themselves. It was only fitting that you had these two start, um, or excuse me, start and finish the match. Um, and again, the suspense was well done for the most part. Every fall at least felt significant because of the stakes that were involved. Um, Heyman's reaction to, to Shane receiving multiple finishers for being eliminated by Jericho was hilarious. I did note that going back and watching it. And speaking of Jericho, um, Heyman also had a tremendous reaction to Jericho attacking the rock late in the match. You know, the crowd into every counter in the final part, you know, featuring rock and Austin and the fans lost it, of course, when angle turned on Austin uh, to give the good guys the victory. Um, and Vince McMahon, you know, celebrating triumphantly on the stage after the match was quite a scene. Um, but look, Vince was never going to turn down an opportunity to bask in the glory of squashing WCW. So this this makes it at number eight on my list. I know it's a little more, you know, there's a lot more people involved, a lot more kind of dynamics involved in this particular one, but uh, it still belongs on the list. And so I put this at number eight. After going back and watching it, uh, yeah, we can all say what might have been when the invasion, but uh, this was still an enjoyable match, Survivor Series 2001. So, all right, on to number seven, The Rock versus Triple H Backlash 2000. Wow. You know, talk about a year, interesting year, 2000, and especially this time period, right, where for many, this righted the wrong of having Triple H retain in the fatal four-way match at WrestleMania 2000. This, of course, was for the WWE Championship at Backlash. And, you know, as was typical during this era, uh, this was not your traditional one-on-one -on -one match. You had McMahon's all over the place, just like you did at WrestleMania. You know, Vince is the instigator. Stephanie's Triple H's lover. Um, Shane's the special guest referee. Linda, you know, the ally for The Rock. Um, and then, of course, you even had Pat Patterson and Joe Briscoe were also there. I mean, as the Stooges 
which I think were undervalued as their roles as the Stooges. But um, and then there was Austin, right? Who took the roof off the place when he finally showed up to help the rock in this match. And um, my goodness though, like the, again, Austin's return here, it, it set people just going crazy, but my goodness, the crowd loved them some rock. And like, you could definitely see that here. And he was in such a groove at this time, you know, it was triple H's top rival. And again, there was a lot of interference in this match, um, but it was understandable for the payoff. This was kind of what you expected and getting Austin, that, that's what you wanted, right? You had Triple H, Austin, Rock, all involved here in some way, shape, or form um, at such a a high point for the company. And so the crowd certainly pushed this match up a notch. You know, without the crowd stuff, maybe this doesn't make number seven, maybe makes lower on the top 10, or maybe not even get in the top 10. But the crowd just pushed this up so much. And I think Austin's, you know, involvement here, it also really added to it. So I put this one at number seven, um, the Rock versus Triple H for the WWE Championship at Backlash 2000. All right, on to number six. I think this match is one that's kind of a forgotten gem for some people. Um, and that is the Rock versus Chris Jericho for the WCW Championship at their March of 2001. So it is weird, you know, just the Rock being WCW champion, always a weird thing. Um, just was never something you would have felt like you would ever associate with the Rock. But this was the invasion period. <laughs> this is what you got. Um, click, click, boom, right? Like this was the uh, saliva theme for No Mercy 2001. Um, but he didn't have to worry about carrying the WCW title too long after Jericho won it here with the unlikely assist from Stephanie McMahon. Uh, they really played up Jericho not winning the big one, um, which would obviously change both in this match and then at Vengeance 2001 when he would beat you know, both Austin and The Rock in the same night to be the undisputed champion. Um, something really stood out, though, in rewatching all these matches, and I kind of just put this note in this one. It's easy to think about how over The Rock was but actually, again, hearing the crowd lose its mind is just a great reminder of how special this dude was. Um, and, and, you know, again, you can draw the parallels. If you are watching this in 2024 and, you know, you see the reaction he got at the day one raw and just any time the rock just comes back out of nowhere, it is it is a spectacle. And, you know, something else I will say the rewatch, especially of this match, reminded me of is how excellent Paul Heyman is as a commentator. Like he was just tremendous here. You got some awesome sequences with Jericho hitting the rock with the rock bottom and then missing the people's elbow. Um, the Spanish announce table got its usual dose of destruction here with the rock hitting the rock bottom on Jericho on that. Crowd started to boo the rock at one point, um, and Jericho reversing the, the people's elbow into the walls was just fantastic. I would highly, you know, if you forgot how this match went, go back and watch this tremendous uh, counter that was. One of the forgotten classics, again, like I said a minute ago, I think it had all the elements of what I enjoy kind of as a wrestling um, person and so definitely one that's number six but i wouldn't be shocked if this was a little bit higher on some people's list just based on it doesn't feel kind of like a forgotten classic it really does uh, if you go back and watch it so rock versus chris jericho no mercy 2001 number six on my list all right now we make it to the top five and we start the top five with a ladder match the rock and triple h the intercontinental championship summer slam 1998 i'll be honest I wasn't sure how this one would hold up watching it for the first time in a while, but even with all the insane ladder matches we've seen since then, I still thoroughly enjoyed it. Like it's sort of a monumental stepping stone for both the rock and triple H here. You know, it's wild to think the rocks only 26 at this point. Um, and you know, as far as ladder matches go, look, it didn't have the high spots that we're used to in this era of wrestling. Um, but the psychology, the selling from both men, it was just, it was, it was fantastic. And, you know, every big move felt important. And, you know, The Rock using the ladder and a chair to sort of decimate Triple H's injured knee, um, you know, due to The Rock, who had already attacked him with a belt on Sunday Night Heat. It just made complete sense. And there were several sort of innovative spots that you had for a 1998 ladder match. Again, we've seen it all, it feels like, since then. But there were some innovative spots here for 1998. And, again, the, this match was at Madison Square Garden, you know, and – the crowd just went nuts when the rock hit the people's elbow on triple H on the ladder. Like they just, wow, the crowd reactions just added so much to the rocks matches. And that shows you how invested they were in him, you know, as a character and the Rocky chance afterward told you all you needed to know about his potential as sort of a mega star. You knew it here. You could see it. This was again, this is August, 1998, but you just knew what this was going to look like for the rock moving forward. And um, listen, I'll say this, the real highlights of the match, uh, 
Triple H's purple tights, uh, still one of my most prized probably action figures I think I ever had. <laughs> it was the one where Triple H had the purple tights. Just thought it was, thought it was great. Um, don't ask me why. I just it was it was perfect. And the old school yellow ladders, like again, we miss those these days. We don't get the the, the yellow ladders the way we used to. So, I know that was a real highlight. But this was uh, said from the start. I mean, th- this one held up. Like this held up much better than I thought it would. Going back and rewatching it now, seeing all the wrestling we've seen since then, um, it still held up. So this made the top five. Rockford's Triple H ladder match, SummerSlam, nineteen ninety eight. All right, <laughs> there's a theme here. <laughs> we, this is going to be it's going to be the three of the last four as we get to the number four. The Rock versus Triple H again, which is again uh, number seven, number five, number four. Rock versus Triple H, the sixty-minute Iron Man match for the WWE Championship at Judgment Day 2000. This match has garnered a lot of opinions over the years, um, and I can understand why. But rewatching it, I'm just going to tell you, and this won't, you know, everyone won't agree, but I still prefer it to the Shawn Michaels Bret Hart match at WrestleMania 12, um, the Iron Man match that is. And this particular era of 2000, you know, the zero falls before overtime just probably would not have worked because we knew it was a different era. Fans expected things a little bit more, you know, fast paced and a little bit more. I don't know what the word was, right? It just, it was different. And I thought there was a lot of creativity in playing out these falls, um, knowing that the pacing was going to be everything for a match like this. And you also, again, had some of the biggest stars in history involved in some fashion, right? You had The Rock, you had Triple H, you had Shawn Michaels as the referee, you had The Undertaker. And so the final stretch leading to the finish is just pure adrenaline. Like there's no other way to describe it. Uh, and the crowd reaction to take her riding in the bike. Um, one of the loudest of the attitude era. Like there's no question about it. You know, American badass is playing. You've got the little video, um, you know, he's here and all that. Yeah. It was, it was one of the loudest of the era. Like you go back and just watch the whole atmosphere. Just when that starts, like it is on another level. Um, the ending far from perfect based on the timing and those kind of things. But in terms of entertainment and atmosphere, it didn't get much better than this. Like we got a number four, but man, there were not a lot. Again, if you go back and watch it from an atmosphere standpoint that could match this, like this was just, this was really um, something else. So probably not, you know, always fun to say, Hey, go back and watch the 60 minute Ironman match. But this is one that I think if you do go back and watch it, there's enough there to keep you entertained for that entire 60 minute stretch. So, um, it makes number four on my list, the Iron Man match from Judgment Day. All right, number three, The Rock versus Kurt Angle versus The Undertaker, the triple threat match for the WWE Championship at Vengeance 2002. Um, the song from Trust Company. Uh, it's just, it, it made this match. Like, it's just, it was tremendous uh, downfall. And, and it sort of made the video package for this match that much better. It was just something to sort of watch the the lead up to it, and then the match itself. Um, you know, the setup for it came after that controversial pin tap out ending where you had, you know, the Undertaker versus Kurt Angle. That was on an edition of SmackDown. And it led to Vince making the triple threat for this match. And in terms of triple threat matches, in my opinion, this is one of the best ever. Um, it, it is pure action for 19 minutes and 35 seconds with all three men just working their asses off here. And there are so many great sequences including The Rock hitting a choke slam on The Undertaker, then going to the ankle lock on Angle, which led to Angle using The Rock bottom on The Rock before Taker hit the ankle slam on Angle. Think about everything I just said there. Like, wild sequences, all action. And, you know, while The Rock winning was significant ahead of his eventual match with Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam that year, uh, which we know what happened there, Angle sort of portraying the desperate heel was one of the many sort of stellar performances in his career here. Cause angle was just using, he was like, okay, I have to win this at every turn. He was trying to find the way to get the win. Um, so many sort of incredible pen attempts and so much suspense in this match. Um, and the chemistry between these three, like I said, was just incredible. One of the best triple threat matches ever. Um, there's, there's just no doubt about it in my mind. So this makes the top three and look, <laughs> if you didn't have the top two here, I mean, this would be, again, this is a classic. And so completely understand, you know, if you just want to go based on, maybe like work rate, those kind of things, this would be maybe number one. Uh, But there are two matches that are going to top it, and it's just given the full package of what these next two matches are uh, is the reason why. So number three, uh, an unforgettable triple threat match, the Rock Kurt Angle Undertaker, Vengeance 2002. All right, on to number two. Yes, it is the Rock versus Hollywood Hulk Hogan, WrestleMania 18. I don't feel like I have to say a lot about these final two matches because it's like you guys know 
you've seen them. You know how legendary both of these matches are. Um, and you probably have already guessed what number one is. But the crowd, the stare, the charisma, you knew as soon as Hogan hit the ring here that this thing was going to be nuts. And you know, from the crowd's reaction, when Hogan throws the rock into the corner, to the rock's mannerisms uh, and reaction to the crowd, just was just a spectacle. Like, I mean, again, we definition of spectacle, right? Like Hogan, Andre, Rock Hogan. Like, I mean, those are this kind of things that are just sort of once in a lifetime moments that you just cannot capture again in a wrestling ring. And, you know, the Jerry Lawler line would prove to be spot on. He said, you know, years from now, people will be talking about this match saying, I was there and I witnessed the Rock and Hulk Hogan. Was not wrong about that. Um, we are talking about it still so many years later, and people have so many different memories of this match. Um, you know, Hogan hitting the low blow and then the rock bottom for a two count, which is a great sort of sequence in this match. Then you had Hogan kicking out of the rock bottom and doing the Hulk up to send the crowd into an absolute frenzy. Rock kicking out of the leg drop at two. Garner sort of a similar reaction. You get the post-match handshake between these two. Um, rock and Hogan then fighting off Hall and Nash. And Rock bringing Hogan back into the ring for Hogan's pose, um, you know, before the two walk up the ramp together. Just think about all those things and, like, how each moment led to the next. And given what, like, going into it, the crowd reactions, everything. Like, again, you talk about reactions from a crowd making a match. This was it. The ultimate definition of that, um, you know, just given how they reacted to Hogan and what that did for their reaction to The Rock and that again, these two walking up the ramp together, just it is an unforgettable piece of wrestling history, like the way this match played out. And it's just one that I, I can understand. I, look, if you were in the crowd for this match, if you were in Toronto at WrestleMania 18. There's no way this is not number one. Like it, it has to be on anybody's list. You would put this at number one. Um, I was not there, but I'm just tell you, like this has a great argument for number one. In all honesty, you could probably put one A, one B on my top two here. Um, but decided to go with this at number two, but it is just, yeah, it's unlike anything else on this list, just based on, um, how that whole thing unfolded in Toronto that night. So number two, the rock versus Hollywood Hogan, um, WrestleMania 18. And that does leave number one on the list. And you're probably not going to be surprised which way we're going with this one. And that is, of course, it is the rock versus Steve Austin, uh, at WrestleMania 17. And, Look, I mean, this is, <laughs> this is look when you when you see this, I mean, let's call it what it is, right? This is this is it. Like this is the ultimate sort of peak of the attitude era. This is this is it. Like this is the top moment in terms of everything you think about. And like I said, I don't even know what else needs to be said that I was gonna be said about this match. WrestleMania 17 <clears throat> is still the only pay-per-view. In, in professional wrestling that I have ever watched again from start to finish immediately after the first run was over. So think about that. We've all watched pay-per-views and all that, but how many have we actually gone back and watched as soon as it was over, we hit play again and we just watched the whole thing over again. Um, I did that with WrestleMania 17 and this was one of the main reasons why great pay-per-view maybe the best of all time. Maybe you would say that in my opinion, but this was it just getting to go back and, and still, you know, I can vividly recall still being wowed by The Rock getting screwed over via the Austin Hill turn at like 2 in the morning, right? I'm watching this again, the replay, starting over, and still just being like, wow, all of this, right? And, and I know from a business perspective, we can question everything and why it wasn't the right move and everything. But at the time, if, you know, I'm not I'm not doing reading wrestling, wrestling websites every day and all the inside information, like just being a fan at the time, it's just... It's different now watching it so many years later, but it still remains a masterpiece, in my opinion. Um, again, in hindsight, easy to second guess the Austin Hill turn, but it doesn't change my opinion on it being one of the greatest matches of all time. Um, and to me, this is the greatest match involving The Rock of all time. Um, everything from bell, the build to the bell ringing, including you know the legendary sit down interview with Jim Ross uh, and the My Way you know video package. This was as close to perfection as it gets for a match of this magnitude. And like we said, there's, there's no comparison in terms of the magnitude, just given what this meant, like for the attitude era. And I know things would veer off course from a, a business perspective after that, but at the time, and even going back and rewatching it, this to me is the best match the rock has ever been 
involved in the rock versus Steve Austin for the WWE championship WrestleMania 17. So there you go. Uh, there are thoughts on this, um, again, incredible run for the rock throughout his career. And, and, you know, again, Billy, when you watch this, maybe he's had a return match with Roman Reigns and maybe this makes the list for you in the top 10. But for now, recording this before that match happens, this is my picks for the top 10 rock matches of all time. Would love to hear what you guys think. Um, drop in the comments below. Let me know uh, how you would rank your top 10. Or if you don't want to give a full 10, give me your top five. Give me your pick for your favorite rock match. Any of those. Um, always enjoy the discussion and the feedback. So again, as you can see, new channel here. We're just having fun talking about some wrestling current and past. Um, and this is one of the fun ideas we're going to do here moving forward. Top 10 matches for different wrestlers uh, will be a recurring series here on the channel. So we really appreciate you guys hitting that subscribe button. Lots more um, fun wrestling talk on the way. And like I said, I enjoy engaging with everyone. Um, so uh, leave a comment, uh, give your thoughts on the rocks matches. And again, appreciate you watching. Uh, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. And uh, we'll talk to you again here soon at Wrestling Reality.